So being the guy that I am, I'm constantly trying to figure out how to make what I have the best that it can be. So I don't have to constantly upgrade, buy new things. I want to take what I already have at home and see if I can make that better. And if I can't, then maybe I'll look towards upgrading. But you guys know I just got new Canton Vento speakers. I've always had my PB4000, so I have pretty good equipment as it is. So for me, I'm trying to figure out how to squeeze the best performance out of what I have already here in the room. So I do a lot of research on my off time when I have it, and I have really learned something new that I didn't necessarily know. Today, I wanna to talk about port plugs. For those who don't know what they are, I wanna talk about that, what they do, what differences do they make, how to use them, when to use them, and if you should use them in your current setup. So let's start off with what are port plugs. Port plugs are foam, cylindrical foam, made to seal any kind of box you may have, whether it's a subwoofer like the PB4000, or if it's a bookshelf speaker, or something of the sort. Port plugs allow you to seal a ported box. So in this example here, this is my PB4000 from SVS, the ported subwoofer. Now when I plug all of these ports, this allows me to have a sealed box. So this has three different functions. It has a sealed mode, an extended mode, and a normal mode. When you have all of the ports unplugged, you are now in the normal operating mode. This gives you the most output. When I plug one port up, it gives me extended mode, which allows me to get the most um, deepest range it can produce at the sacrifice of a little bit of output. Now, if I seal all three of these ports here, I am now in sealed mode. So what this allows me to do is to get a tighter, more accurate, punchier, faster response at the sacrifice of both output and low note extension. So you get a better quality sound overall, but maybe not as deep and it's not as loud. So that's what port, port plugs do. They just plug your port. They give the option to seal a speaker. If you have one port, you can just seal it. If you have multiple ports, then you can tune it the way you'd like to. So they allow you to tune your speaker or they allow you to have it ported or have it sealed if you need it. Now, when should you use port plugs? There's two reasons and two main people, types of people who should use port plugs. Port plugs should be used when you're in a smaller room like mine, for example. I've actually been listening to my sound system with both of my subwoofers plugged in sealed mode and it sounds a lot better. But why is that? Well, in a small room, it's very, very easy to pressurize everything in here. These subwoofers are way too big for the small room and I have two of them. So you actually do yourself a disservice having two big speakers in a room. There's so much pressure, so these wavelengths are so big that they have nowhere to go. So you just have a whole bunch of built up sound throughout the room. So you probably have very uneven sound as you move from one spot to another. These port plugs allow me to seal up my subs so I have a much tighter and a much um, more accurate less boomy response than I do with them open or with one plug in. And that's because we're sealing the box off. We're not reinforcing any of the low end and it's not energizing the room as much as it would if I had one port or no ports at all. So the sealed mode allows me to have a bigger speaker in a room and it helps with, it helps a little bit. It won't completely kill it, but it'll help a little bit with some of those peaks and valleys and noise that people find in the small rooms when they have speakers that are too big. So if you should, you should be using these if you have a subwoofer or a speaker that's just too big for the room and has a lot of reinforced bass that is negative to the sound. Maybe you should try sealed mode like I have and you should probably get a better result. Now you will lose output and you maybe will lose low bass extension, but at the gain of a lot less peaks and knolls, a little more accurate, more tighter sound. And if your speaker is too big for the room, then you probably have too much bass anyway. So bringing some of that back could help you. Now, subwoofers aren't the only types of speakers that can benefit from a port plug. Speakers like this can too. This is the Fluence XL8F power speaker that Fluence has sent me in for a review. And if you haven't seen the first video of that, check my playlist or check my past videos, that's up there now. Um, but this is a tower speaker and often tower speakers have ports, whether it's on the bottom or if it's on the, the top, the sides, the front. Most speakers have ports nowadays that help reinforce lower end bass, especially like a bookshelf speaker or a small speaker that needs help reproducing bass. They often have a port somewhere. Now this port's 
this port plug is pretty big, but you can get port plug sizes um, to, to your needs. So you can find a port size, get your port size off your speaker, and then they sell port plug. I believe SVS sells port plugs on their, their website, but I think they fit their subwoofers. Um, but you can buy port plugs from a lot of different manufacturers, or you can even stuff it with a sock. That'll also help too, a pretty dense sock. Get a couple socks and ball them together and put them in, and it has the same effect. It may not look as pretty or it may not seal as tight, but you can pretty much seal a speaker up with just a ball of socks. Now, why would you want to seal a speaker like this? Well, this is made for like a small to medium sized room. And so you may not have the space to pull the speaker off the wall to make it sound its most optimal um, ability possible. So you may consider porting or port plugging the speaker so that you can keep it against the wall. Again, when you put a speaker against the wall, you're reinforcing that base that comes out of this port here. And it usually has a negative effect. Sometimes if the speaker's really small and you put a speaker against the wall, you may positively reinforce some of the base that otherwise wouldn't be there. But if you have a speaker that's already base heavy and then you put it against the wall, you're probably gonna reinforce the base in a way that you was a little more distasteful, a little boominess to it, it loses a little accuracy, it starts adding color to it that isn't, doesn't sound too good. Um, so when you have a speaker you have to put against the wall, you may want to consider port plugging it. If you have a speaker that port shoves, meaning air passing through it, you can hear that air come through, you may want to plug that. If you're looking for a more tight or accurate sound, maybe for two channel listening, you may want to get a port plug or a sock. And you can put it in there and pretty much seal your speaker off. Now you're going to lose a little bit of lower end output, but your roll off is going to be a little less dr drastic. What, am, what I mean by roll off is when your speaker starts to reach its lower frequencies in a ported box, it drops off very quickly. So if the speaker is rated down to 40 hertz, at 40 hertz and lower, it drops off pretty quickly. You start to not hear anything. A sealed box has a slower slope, a, a lower gradual slope. So it doesn't just drop off the heel. It slowly starts to roll off. So those bass frequencies don't just diminish out of nowhere. They have a more smoother, flatter response. And so if you have a speaker that's really small, that's up against the wall, it may help it. If you have a bigger speaker like this against the wall, it may hurt your sound, and you may want to look into port plugs. So port plugs are here not only just for tuning, but it's also here to make your sound a little bit better. Maybe you have a ported subwoofer and you think you want to try sealed, you can do that with a port plug, or if you can't find a port plug that fits your speaker, you can get several different socks and ball them up together and stuff the port, and you have just about the same effect. So guys, I just want to tell you a little bit about port plugs because I've been playing around with it in my home theater for a while now, and I've listened to different movies and different music tracks and just regular TV just to hear the differences. Um, again, my subs have different modes, so not only can I seal it, but I have to put it in that um, particular mode. So if I, when I when I plug it, I got to turn it to sealed mode. Um, so the amp acts differently, but. Um, with that being said, it's been a positive impact on my sound system. Not that it sounded bad, but of course, like I said, I'm trying to get the best that I can out of the system. So I'm experimenting with different things, and then I'll share them with you as I go. So guys, leave me a comment down below. Do you guys have port plugs in your subs or in your speakers? And if you don't, have you ever thought about putting them in? And if you do, what do you think about the sound? Is it better or worse? Leave me that comment down below, hit that like button, and subscribe if you're not already. We will see you in the next video. K-Base Guy out. Peace.